And we begin with one of our favorite newsmakers who spent a decade representing the great state of Wyoming in Congress through four presidents as a trusted advisor, chief of staff, secretary of defense, 46th vice president of the U.S. for George W. Bush. Now serving America in a new way. And that's uh, lending his important voice to the most important of all issues, defending freedom, keeping us safe, so future generations will know the USA we've all known and loved. It's always an honor to welcome the Common Sense Club and the Scott Hinnon Show, Dick Cheney. Welcome back, my friend. Well, good morning, Scott. How are you? I'm great. Glad to have you. It's been over a month that you uh, spoke of uh, President Obama putting politics over security and uh, suggested that his failure to act on uh, General McChrystal's summertime request for additional troops in Afghanistan was uh, dithering. We're now late November. Has this moved from dithering to dereliction, in your view? Well, I, I see the spread of the phrase dithering. I think even Maureen Dowd used it in her column this past weekend. So it caught on. Um, the thing I'm concerned about, I continue to be concerned about, supposedly now there's, there's speculation he's going to make an announcement after Thanksgiving. But is the, the delay is, is not cost-free. It's not one of these deals where you can just sit there and delay and delay and delay and think you're going to make a better decision. Every day that goes by raises doubts in the minds of our friends and allies in the region about what you're going to do. Raises doubts in the minds of the troops. <clears throat> and uh, you're uh, going to go ahead ultimately and make an announcement of policy of some kind here. But I worry that the delay and the time that it's taken to come to a decision will, uh, will be very costly. After most recently uh, hearing more talk of off-ramps and exit strategies than, than victory, you got our ambassador sending cables to be leaked, arguing against a troop increase, critical of Karzai, who I'm sure loved the idea that a close friend of Hillary's was working for an opponent of his in the election, or Joe Biden taking his shots. And uh, speaking of leaks, one day we hear the president's decided there will be more troops and the opposite a day later. What's this all about? Why, why is he doing this uh, to the troops that are awaiting re reinforcements in Afghanistan? What's behind this, do you believe? I don't really know, Scott. I, I worry that, uh, you know, there's a lack of understanding there of what uh, what this means from the perspective of the troops. You know, if you're out there on the line day in and day out and uh, putting your life at risk on a volunteer basis for the nation and you see the commander-in-chief uh, unable or appearing to be unable to make a decision about uh, the way forward here, uh, that you know that raises serious doubts. Nobody wants to think volunteer to participate in that kind of operation. Is dereliction too strong at this point? It seems to me to be outrageous, and 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 uh, I think dereliction, the the true definition, that fits. Do you? Well, I I haven't gone that far, and I'm. I, it may in part be inexperience on Obama's part. Um, it may be that there's confusion on the staff. I, uh, but I'm, you know, I'm not encouraged by it. It's uh, presidents, obviously, are the, the ones we pay the big bucks to to make these kinds of difficult decisions. And it's not as though he had not addressed this before. He, remember, announced a new strategy last March. He was given a strategy that was pretty well put together at the end of our administration. It's just recommendations. He adopted many of them, announced a strategy in March, reinforced it in August before the speech at the VFW, and then in the fall when it's time to decide based on the, the Crystal's recommendations, you know, he's, he's dithered. I want to ask you about some other issues as well, and one is what happened at Fort Hood. Uh, and the, a lot of our listeners are offended by this and, and are offended to hearing the lectures about not rushing to judgment or the verbal gymnastics or teleprompter tap dance to avoid calling what happened at Fort Hood to our troops what it was, terrorism at the hand of, uh, of his Islamic, Islamic radical, Nadal ha Hassan. Uh, and I'm curious, are, like our listeners, were you offended, and should President Obama call this terrorism? I think it clearly is an act of terrorism. I don't know any other way to, de to define it. This is a guy who apparently motivated by some of the same sentiments and philosophy that uh, was behind 9-11. Uh, takes a weapon and um, kills 13 of our soldiers. Uh, and wounds many, many more. Uh, that strikes me as an act of terror. I don't know any, any other way to call it. Why was this guy still in the military? Who blew it here, do you believe? I don't know. We, I think we'll find out eventually. The, um, apparently, there were emails back and forth between 
him and the uh, radical Islamist leader in, um, in Yemen. Um, I haven't seen any of those, obviously. All I've seen is <clears throat> what's in the newspaper. Um, and uh, I, uh, I think we've got a lot of digging to do to find out exactly what happened and, and uh, make certain we know uh, who is responsible and, and how we can avoid it. Our guest is former Vice President of the United States, Dick Cheney, on the Scott Hannon Show and the Common Sense Club today in our exclusive interview. The, the Obama administration has recently decided that for the first time in our nation's history, an enemy combatant caught on the battlefield will be tried in civilian court. I want your reaction to Caleb Sheikh Mohammed and four other top al-Qaeda terrorists being given these rights in a New York City trial. I think it's a big mistake. Um, the, the fact, and I don't want to go too long here on, uh, on my answer, but a couple of key points here, Scott. Before 9-11, we treated terrorist attacks as criminal offenses, as law enforcement problems. So somebody tries to blow up the World Trade Center in New York in 93, we arrest him, put him on trial, put him in prison. Case closed. What 9-11 did was change the way we look at those events, because all of a sudden, we had 16 acres of downtown Manhattan destroyed. We had people jumping uh, out of 84 uh, windows to avoid being burned to death. We had the Pentagon badly struck. We would have had probably the White House hit if it hadn't been for the brave passengers on Flight 93 who took it down. We had 3,000 dead Americans that day. That is not a law enforcement problem. That's an act of war. And you need to treat it as an act of war. And once you make that decision that it is an act of war, then you marshal all of your national assets and your national means to go after the bad guys, to go after those who supply them with weapons and training, to go after those who provide sanctuary and safe harbor, is to pursue a much more aggressive strategy, which we did, and uh, which paid off in, in safety for the homeland here for eight years. Now when I see them bringing Khalid Sheikh Mohammed to New York City, uh, to stand trial in a civilian court. It says to me they've forgotten those lessons and they've, in fact, reverted back to the old mindset that a terrorist attack is, quote, a law enforcement problem, not an act of war. Can it be stopped? Would you have any advice for those who so vehemently oppose this decision, Mr. Vice President? Well, I know there have been efforts in the Congress to pass legislation that would prohibit bringing these uh, folks here for trial. Uh, I think we ought to continue to encourage our congressmen and senators to support that kind of effort. They, uh, there was a perfectly legal, constitutional, proper way to deal with these, and that's before military commissions. The precedent is set. Uh, that's what Roosevelt did in World War II when he captured uh, German saboteurs on Long Island. Um, that's the way we dealt with the conspiracy, the folks who are part of the conspiracy around Abraham Lincoln. It's a well-established practice. People have representation before those commissions. Uh, there are rules of evidence and so forth. And uh, uh, ultimately, the Supreme Court, uh, on more than one occasion, uh, found that it was constitutionally permissible to, to deal with it in that fashion. And, and that's what we did. We've got those military commissions set up today. And as a matter of fact, uh, Holder announced that some of those... Um, folks responsible for the, uh, the ship attack, the USS Cole attack in uh, 2000, will be tried through military commissions. That's the way it should be done for all of us. I can't, for the life of me, figure out what Holder's intent here in uh, terms of having College of Muhammad tried in a civilian court, other than to, to um, have some kind of show trial here. They'll simply use it as a platform um, to... Uh, argue their case. They don't have a defense to speak of. It'll be a, a place for them to stand up and, and spread uh, the, the uh, terrible ideology that they adhere to. And their, def uh, their lawyers are already telling us as much already. We, we touched on some important national security and foreign policy issues today in our chat here, but I guess really only scratched the surface on the important issues facing our country. So I'm curious kind of on a broader level, your thoughts about the worldview of the current administration. And much has been made about uh, President Obama's recent bow before Japan's emperor, and some recall that your 2007 greeting to him at the same residence uh, was a very different fashion. Was that bow an apt metaphor for President Obama's foreign policy, and is it harmful to the United States in your view? Well, I, I think it's harmful because I, when the President of the United States bows to a foreign leader, our friends and allies don't expect it. 
and our adversaries perceive it as a sign of weakness. It's, uh, I think it's fundamentally harmful, and uh, it shows in my mind uh, that um, this is a guy, the, the president who would bow, for example, who doesn't fully understand or have the same perception of the U.S. role in the world that I think most Americans have. Uh, this is an exceptional nation. We are the world's foremost democracy. We have sacrificed thousands of lives to bring freedom and democracy to people all over the world, to win World War II, World War I, etc. And uh, it's an exceptional nation. And uh, as such, I think it's important that um, the president's views and, and conduct reflect that. And instead, what I see in President Obama is somebody who goes out and bows to foreign leaders and then spends his um, trips abroad primarily apologizing for U.S. behavior. I just I find that uh, very upsetting. We're with you. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but our listeners uh, join me in sending holiday greetings to the entire Cheney family, including, by the way, someone we're thrilled to see and hear from more and more these days, your daughter Liz. In fact, we had a listener call the other day with a dilemma. Maybe you can help us out before we say goodbye here. The listener was so excited to see a surge of smart Republican women in the spotlight and was dreaming of a new administration after 2012 with a Palin, a Cheney, and a Bachman. Uh, Michelle Bachman, who we adore here, by the way, Minnesota's 6th District uh, Congresswoman. The sure. tough part was deciding who would be president, who would be VP, or who would be at state or defense. Can you offer any suggestions on that, Mr. Vice President? Well, I will, I will stay out of that debate, but I will <laughs> certainly pass it along to my daughter. Well, say hi to her and say hi to Lynn and everybody else, the whole family. Great sure. to talk uh, to you, sir. We're, we're also, we've got a new granddaughter as of last Wednesday, so... Uh, it's number seven in the Fettini family. It'll be a special set of holidays. Well, that's fantastic. Good to talk to you, sir. Take care. Thank you. See you, Scott. You bet. Bye-bye. Vice President of the United States, uh, George, for George W. Bush, uh, Dick Cheney, our guest on the Scott Hennon Show. He was the 46th Vice President of the United States. But as I mentioned at the top, there's a man that served this country in so many ways. And now, I think, with that voice, with that uh, that just you know unbelievable sense of uh, where we've been and where we're going, really lends his voice to, to in a different way, defending freedom and keeping us safe. And uh, ultimately, his voice is heard and affects these, uh, these decisions. So what would you think of that? We'll talk about that. I, I believe, and I, the vice president, I understand, did not want to go there uh, in, uh, in, in saying what's happened in Afghanistan is no longer dithering, but it's a dereliction. And when I was, was prepping for this interview uh, last night, I thought, you know, dereliction to me, you know, what does dereliction of duty mean? It's a, little, it's a little strong, right, when you say a dereliction of duty. Uh, but actually, if you if you Google dereliction, I, I don't like to use the word um, um, Google around here because, of course, we're we're home to Microsoft, and really, uh, that's like in the middle of Ford country talking about Chevy or something. Uh, so, if you Bing a dereliction, let's Bing it up. Let's Bing it up, folks, and say what is the what is the definition of it? Willful neglect as a duty of principle, the act of abandoning, and I think the abandoning one is even more, you know prevalent here he's abandoned by having a request for true by in march calling this a war of necessity and having since summertime a request from your general uh, for more troops and here we are at thanksgiving and we still don't have a decision yet is that not abandoning our troops is that not willful neglect of our troops? Is that too strong? I, I don't know. I welcome your calls, questions, and comments. 271 1100 888 598 8464. Isn't it great to hear from the vice president and, uh, and, and have the, his wise counsel? I just hope it's heard at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. Will, you're on the Scott Hennon Show on the Common Sense Club. Go ahead. Well, uh, sure, it would have been great to uh, talk with uh, Dick Cheney. I was one of his distant minions way back when, as a junior, junior officer, and kind of was working my way up in the military. There are a few operations